Voluspa Stanza 61 through 66 61 In wondrous beauty once again shall the golden tables tables stand mid the grass which the gods had owned in the days of old 62 Then fields unsowed bear ripened fruit all ills grow better and Balder comes back Balder and Hoth dwell in Hrupt's battle hall. And the mighty gods, would you know yet more? 63. Then Honir wins, the prophetic wand, and the sons of the brothers of Tveki abide in Vandaheim now. Would you know yet more? 64. More fair than the sun, a hall I see roofed with gold, on Gimli it stands. There shall the righteous rulers dwell, and happiness ever there shall have they have. 65. There comes on high all power to hold, a mighty lord, all lands he rules. 66. From below the dragon, dark comes forth, Nithug flying from Nithavio. The bodies of men on his wings he bears, the serpent bright, but now must I sink. <clears throat> 61. The Hawksburg version of the first two lines runs, The gods shall find there, wondrous fair, the golden tables amid the grass. No lacuna, line 4, is indicated in the manuscripts. Golden tables, CF stanza 8 and note. 62. Balder, CF stanza 32 and note. Balder and his brother Hoth, who unwittingly slew him at Loki's instigation, return together, their union being a symbol of the new age of peace. Hropt, another name for Othin, his battle hall is Valhall. 63. No lacuna, line 2. Indicated in the manuscripts, Honir, CF stanza 18 and note. In this new age, he has the gift of foretelling the future. Tvegi, the twofold, another name for Othin. His brothers are Vili and Ve. C.F. Lokasena, 26 and note. Little is known of them and nothing beyond this reference of their sons. Vindheim, home of the wind, heaven. 64. This stanza is quoted by Snorri. Gimli. Snorri makes this name of the hall itself, where here it appears to refer to a mountain on which the hall stands. It is the home of the happy, as opposed to another hall, not here mentioned for the dead. Snorri's description of this second hall is based on Voluspo, 38, which he quotes, and perhaps that stanza properly belongs after 64. 65. This stanza is not found in Regis, and is probably spurious. No lacuna is indicated in the Hawksburg version, but late paper manuscripts add two lines running, rule he orders, and rights he fixes, laws he ordains, that ever shall live. The name of this new ruler is nowhere given, and of course, the suggestion of Christianity is unavoidable. It is not certain, however, that this, even this stanza, refers to Christianity, and if it does, it may have been interpolated long after the rest of the poem was composed. 66. This stanza, which fits so badly with the preceding ones, footnote P27, may well have been interpolated. It has been suggested that the dragon, making a last attempt to rise, is destroyed, this event marking the end of evil in the world. But in both manuscripts, the final half-line does not refer to the dragon, but as the gender shows to the vulva herself, who sinks into the earth, a sort of conclusion to the entire prophecy. Presumably, the stanza barring the last half-line, which was probably intended as the conclusion of the poem, belongs somewhere in the description of the great struggle. Nithog, the dragon at the roots of Yildrasil, 
CF stanza 39 and note. Nithafiol, the dark crags, nowhere else mentioned. Must I? The manuscripts have must she. That is the end of our reading of the Voluspa with the analysis. I hope you have enjoyed this. Please sub and share my channel to those you think might benefit. I now have memberships available and you can support my channel for just one dollar. I appreciate the time that you spend with me. Upcoming, I am working on Beowulf and will release a deep dive into earth goddesses from all over the world. Thanks again and have a great day.